Again, again Saturday, August 17th, 1985. Rodney, take it away. We start off the program of the hot open with Sam Houston getting his arm hurt by uh, Ole and Arn Anderson, Tully Blanchard, baby doll, right at the beginning of the program. Then they go to the open. It's uh, Tony Schiavone, David Crockett, and they open up the program with the world tag team champions, the Rock and Roll Express, Ricky Moore, Robert Gibson. As they're going to be facing the rising sun. The crowd is on fire today. That studio is packed and they are ready for some wrestling. There's no doubt about that. Uh, what did you think about the Rock and Roll Express interview there, Brent? Oh, I, oh it was great. That was great. And I, I was surprised that Robert Gibson opened it up and started doing it <laughs> to begin with. Yeah, regardless right. of what he says, Robert can talk. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, uh, Jack? Yeah, that was it. It's, it's good. Uh, 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 Robert? Yeah, as we get on into this show, you'll find out that Robert isn't quite what everybody has that uh, in mind. He can talk, and he knows how to take some heat. And then we'll talk about that shortly. All right, match number one has Terry Taylor against the Stomper Jr. Uh, no, uh, it's Tommy Lane in this one. Uh, Jack, what do you think about this match? I, I thought it was a good match. Uh, you know, they uh, uh, they wrestled. Uh, the, the whole show, we found that uh, – they presented something. I guess they got tired, like Brent uh, said earlier today when we were talking. I guess they got tired of just these squash matches, and they actually had professional wrestling on, competitive professional wrestling matches tonight, and this was a great way to start. Yep. Brent? Yeah, I agree. It was, it was a good match. Uh, uh, I, I, I don't ever like, you know, and, you know, and, and I didn't see what Rodney's going to probably talk about in just a moment, but I did, I don't like the big elbows and you go up and <laughs> you go up in the air. Yeah. I don't like that because it doesn't look right. And, and he, uh, Tommy Lane did that several times in the, I think in probably the finish of this match. And I, I just, I've never have liked that. If you're gonna go you guys thing, gonna fly. Yeah. <laughs> you know, put, it, put it here, you know, I about knock my pictures down. <laughs> Yeah, ahead, not, knocking the Sawyer off the uh, off the wall there. Yeah. Well, in the corner, uh, Tommy Lane has uh, Taylor in the corner. He's hit him three times, and Terry Taylor's slapping his leg three times in that corner. And it was blatant for all to see, except for Brent, apparently, apparently asleep during that. But, <laughs> match, short through the matches. Uh, but, yeah, it was plain as day. I would have met Mr. Taylor at the, at the door, at the, at the curtain. This is national television. This is not some kind of Ricky <laughs> National Guard armory show. If you ever slap your legs like that again and expose the business, you're unemployed. It would never have been shown. That whole thing, that whole little part in that corner would have never been shown if it was me. Was just unprofessional. And I have a feeling Mr. Taylor has to do with the leg slaps that we have in, in today's wrestling. I think he might be the innovator of such stupidity and exposure of the business. I wonder if he's getting his royalty checks every time somebody does that. <laughs> He'd be the richest man in the world. Rich. Well, I can tell you right now, uh, Terry Taylor always was and has always been the concession stand's best friend. Ladies and gentlemen, during this match, we also learned that the new NWA uh, World Junior Champion is Randy Royal. He defeated uh, Denny Brown, and we found that out during this match as well. Didn't We didn't follow up with it throughout the rest of the show, but we found that out on the yeah. show. In that match. Uh, then we have an interview. Of course, in the end, it's uh, Terry Tedder winning with a sunset flip. Uh, interview with Ric Flair, the world champion. He talked to Magnum TA, Dusty Nikita, and Buddy Lindell. Uh, Jack, what did you think about this? <laughs> Flair being Flair, making everybody look like a superstar. That's the way you do it. All right, Brent? Yeah, I enjoyed the interview. It was oh. interesting. We've got another great match coming up. Rocky King against Ern Anderson with Ole Anderson in the corner. Jack, what do you think about this one? Well, now, we, it wasn't Ern. It was Iron. I -R -R Iron. Okay. Iron so, Anderson. Yes. So, I don't know if David actually got an eight hours of sleep or, or what changed. But uh, uh, okay. the match was great. And, and I'm going to tell you, my favorite part of this was when it was over with how Arn put Rocky over. You know, as being, hey, you know, this is not just some guy off the street. This is a real wrestler. This guy was really good, and I beat him. This, it was great. Yeah, you know, something I like about Rocky King, you know, we've seen Josh Stroud. Rocky King actually had the abilities and was oh, yeah. got, got better and better and better and better uh, where Josh Stroud did. Yeah, right. <laughs> you're exactly right. Arn Anderson wins it with the Gork Buster over Rocky King. There's an interview with Ole and Arn Anderson, and they're talking about, uh, of course, they're the national tag team champions. And then we get to see the full footage 
of the incident where Ole Anderson come off the top rope as Tully and and uh, Arn Anderson uh, held the uh, uh, Sam Houston up and by, Baby Doll slips Ole the foreign object puts it in the knee comes off the top rope beautiful absolutely beautiful stuff and then Dusty Magnum and uh, uh, what was it. Uh, um, uh, Fernandez all came to the ring, and of course Anderson and the Anderson Tully Blanchard. Of course, this sets up the new alliance between the Andersons and Tully Blanchard. Great, what did you think about that? Oh, you know, I loved that the whole thing was great. That crowd was on fire every time from that wherever they did that TV taping at. They were, they were on fire, but it, I, I always love it for whatever reason. And uh, Ole's the only one these people do this to. When he's doing an interview, everybody is hollering, we don't want to hear it. We don't want to hear it. Every time from from, from Ole. And there was people in the in the dressing room that said the same thing to him. So I think that was probably <laughs> They're the ones that started the chant. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Uh, exactly. <laughs> Oh, it was great. I especially kept looking out in the crowd for that girl with the lace gloves because, you know, she'd still be age appropriate for me. <laughs> <laughs> now we have match number three. Another great match coming up is Joel Deaton against the United States heavyweight champion Tully Blanchard with Baby Doll. And, of course, this, of course, they talk about in the match, uh, 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 David and Tony talked about the new alliance with them and Tully Blanchard. A tremendous match. Jack, what do you think about this one? If you had not had any more matches the rest of this show, this match right here was worth watching. They could have interviewed. The rest of the show wouldn't have upset me at all. This was a professional wrestling match, and I loved it. Brett? Yeah, Tully, Tully was giving him everything. He he had a great match with a guy, made him look great, and then it made him look great when he beat him. And the yep. crowd was really into it. In the end, it's uh, Tully Blanchard winning with the slingshot suplex. And there's the United States champion. Now, interview with Dusty Rhodes, world television champion. Talks to the Andersons. Tully and Dusty uh, talks about Baby Doll and running up his uh, bills on his credit card. Uh, uh, Zach, what do you think? <laughs> I've been in Dusty's place so many times. That's why I'm single. So I know, <laughs> I knew, I know exactly where he's coming from. Great interview, though. You know, put over the fact that, hey, I won. I got her. I kind of wished I hadn't now, but, you know, life goes on. I love it. Great interview. Yeah, it was good. Right. Very good. And then, and then uh, we go to a match, Magnum TA versus the Golden Terror. And this was a surprise for everyone. Uh, Jack, tell us about the surprise. Uh, you know, I, I, I picked up something, a pencil to write a note, and I missed the whole match. I was kidding. It, 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 it was quick, but it was a good match. It was a good match. Yeah. yeah. And then it's the belly to belly with Magnum TA. And that was the end of that one. I uh, did an interview with both uh, Magnum TA and Dusty. And of course, TA talking about the Andersons, talking about what they did to Sam Houston and uh, getting ready for it and wanting a Texas tornado match, which I'm assuming that's coming up at the next Omni event. A uh, Texas tornado match with Dusty and Magnum TA against the Andersons, Olean. Iron. Yeah. Iron. Iron today. Yeah, it is. Match number five. Anderson next week. But you know what Match number five. Uh, not one of my favorites, but it was the Barbarian against uh, one of the greats, uh, Lee Ramsey. And this one, uh, the Barbarian was accompanied by number one, Paul Jones and uh, Abdullah the Butcher. Uh, Brent? I frontwards that match up. I'm sorry. <laughs> From a matchup, does it was it better in fast forward? Yeah, Lee Ramsey usually is good when he when you're frontwards him up. I noticed. Uh, Jack, now I like Barbarian. I, I guess because back in those days, you just didn't see guys in that kind of physical condition very often. So I, you know, I, I got a lot of admiration for him. And you know, the guy in the long run had a pretty stellar career. Sure yeah. did. At the end, it's uh, the Barbarian winning with the top rope headbutt. And uh, then an interview with Paul Jones, the Bar and Ab uh, Barbarian and Abdullah the Butcher. They talk about Jimmy Valiant and challenge Dusty Rose to the World Television Championship. I'm assuming, I'm assuming that is coming up somewhere down the line. That's going to be pretty good. And it, and it would be different than what they had had before. Yeah, let, with, uh, let, let me yeah. interject right here. Is what I have noticed, and I don't know if anybody else has, but they had so many overlaying uh, storylines going on back in this time. It wasn't just two guys working or four guys working, you know, an angle, you had so many different layers of different guys at any time at any arena, it could be anybody and they've built for it. 
That's right, and it's and it is that's where you can ex interchange the talent, hitting that sweet spot, which we it's very that's it's very rare, but when you get it, you got it, and and they're hit they're heading that way for sure, Brent. Yeah, I, you know, Paul, Paul Jones to me, you know, people say, "Well, I, you know, I didn't think he could, he could do a great interview. He knew what he was doing. He knew the points he needed to get, and he knew how to get the heat when he needed to get the heat." Yep. So. I thought I always thought Paul very Jones. different than he and, and James J. Dillon Cornette for sure. Uh, then he can see some Amway, so that's <laughs> right. You can't you a match number six, the World Tag Team Championship on the line. It is the Rock and Roll Express against the Rising Sun with James J. Dillon. Jack, what did you think about this one? I thought it was a great match. I did a little research. Uh, one of the, the, the Japanese guys were uh, the original Kendo Nagasaki. And uh, I'll probably mess this up. Uh, Tatsutashi Goto, which I've heard of Goto before. That was the guys under the mask. Uh, I, it was a great match. Those guys were in tremendous shape. Uh, I don't know if they were only purposely having them there for a short term, what that deal was. But uh, personally, I... I I, I wish they had done a little bit more with it, just a, a clean pin on the end. But it was a great match. Again, just like I alluded to earlier, Robert Gibson took the heat during this match. We're normally used to seeing uh, Ricky take the heat and, and, you know, and get the hot tag to Robert coming in, cleaning the house like Superman. But they reversed roles this time. And, and both, it shows you both are really good. You know, I love the finish in this match because they had done the thing where he, he, he whipped them in, he gave them the big the big chop, and then they did it again. Robert comes in and hits them. What's it? And it was beautiful the way he, yeah, the way he brought them over and he sunset flipped them and beat them one, two, three. I thought this finish was tremendous. Whoever came up with it, whether it was Ricky Morton, Robert Gibson, James J. Bill, and Dusty Rhodes, tremendous finish. Absolutely, and, and and really, we should see more of the Rising Sun, but we do not see any more of them. They are gone <laughs> after this. And, of course, during this uh, match, we uh, uh, Tony and uh, David lets us know that there's fans from Houston, Texas in the audience for today, so they knew Rock and Roll Express from their Mid-South days. Uh, then we had an interview with Tully Blanchard with Baby Doll. They talked Dusty Rose in the World TV Championship and Magnum TA. And, of course, uh, uh, Brent, what did you think about that? Oh, I... I I don't even know what he said. Uh, they show Baby Don. I forgot everything. He said. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty guilty of the same thing. It, it was a good interview. Again, those overlying, uh, overlaying storylines that they got going on. It was great. Tully Blanchard doesn't do anything bad. Yeah, no, and it's still shining, completely shining. Another great match coming up is a tag match with Pistol Pez Watley in the Italian State against Ivan Koloff, Crusher Khrushchev, and Nikita Koloff at ringside. Jack, what do you think about this one? Uh, it, was, it was a pretty good match. Uh, to my surprise, Italian State got beat. Oh, match man. But, oh, amazing. Yeah. Yeah, shock. A shocker indeed. Rent. Uh, you know, I liked the match. I liked every time Pez was in there, but for some reason, I just cringe every time Italian Stallion's in the ring. I don't know why. It's not that he's a horrible wrestler. I just, I just cringe. I'm not for sure why. Maybe you're afraid that he's going to hand you the uh, bill for the pizza for the evening. <laughs> could very well be. All them colors right there. Are you afraid that you're going to get that? That bill, that bill right there. All right, so now we have. Uh, they're going to talk. Uh, it's Tony and uh, David talking about next week's show. It's going to be for the World Six Man Tag Team Championship. It's going to be the Russians, uh, Ivan Nikita Koloff, Crusher Khrushchev against Ron Bass, Jimmy Valiant, and <clears throat> the American Starship Eagle. Why else have two other partners when you have him as a partner? Yeah, I know. I mean, really. I mean, after the American Starship Eagle. Really, no need to have anybody. No, else. Let's be fair, man. You know, he went on to a stellar. Oh, never mind. I'm talking about somebody else. Okay. So, match, so and then he comes up. Match number eight is the American Starship Eagle laying the great gigantic egg with uh, Gerald Finley. Actually, this was a lot better than the first match he had. Brent, yeah. I was reading my magazine during that time. Uh, well, can you imagine the wrestling news? I was re reading that during that, and I don't, I don't remember anything that happened. He won with a leg drop. America's Starship Eagle over Gerald Finley. What were they? Again, what were they thinking? Dressing them just well, like Hulk Hogan. And what were they thinking? Ah. Well, they were thinking so much that they had to send Ric Flair out there for a second time to cover up that match. With another interview. 
And this time <laughs> he's out here talking about Dusty Rhodes this time around. And of course, everything leading to the big Starcade coming up and that. Hey, by up. the way, now let me ask this question. Ric Flair did this interview and he was talking and he said during this video, I believe it was during this, it could have been the first one, but he said, here's Dusty Rhodes in the control room. So he basically yep. gave faves that Dusty's in the con control room and he <laughs> tells what kind of hat he's got on and everything yeah. in the con control room. What's wrong with Flair? He's telling me behind the scenes, he said, well, Dusty he just gave me the finish uh, for the match in the Omni uh, Sunday night. So I, what, <laughs> what well, he just said that he wanted to get in the control room and Dusty wouldn't let him in. He wanted to sit in there. He has to sit out with the other guys. Well, Dusty's got the big high, the big chair sitting in the, the control room. Was was this did did Flair do another interview after this or is this on? Uh let's see. I believe uh did he do another one after that? No, I think this is the last one. Okay, this is the one that I really enjoyed because he built the company. It's been right. the best professional wrestling organization on the planet. He mm -hmm. wasn't wrong. And then he proceeded to build every guy that he had any involvement with on that show, whether it was the good guys or the bad guys. He made the people understand that these were the greatest professional wrestlers in the world right now. Right. And that is how you do it. You exactly. make people believe that when you beat somebody, you beat somebody. You know, he didn't run them down. You know, he switched gears a little bit, started running Dusty down a little bit, but he had already put him on a pedestal, you know, but then clarified that, hey, no matter what, or Nikita, it wasn't, wasn't Dusty, it was Nikita. He was saying, you know, you're great, you're tough, but I'm tougher, I'm better. You know, I've, I've tasted what you got, and it, it was easy to swallow. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, it was great, great interview, I thought. Yeah. Uh, then we have another interview with Ivan Nikita, Koloff, Crusher, Cruz, Chef, the World Six-Man Tag Team Champions. They talk about Ric Flair, the Road Warriors, Ro uh, the uh, Rock and Roll Express. They talk about even having a lumberjack match with Ric Flair for the world title coming up. Uh, just tremendous, Brent. Yeah. He also Tony told Tony he didn't get a haircut. Yep. Yes, he did. <laughs> Ivan did. Time that he get, and he was it was it was time for yeah. haircut. I think yes, he might need to get that out there. Uh, then, then another. We had three interviews back to back. Unless I missed something in that, it was Jim Cornette uh, talking about the Sawyers. And then match number nine is the Midnight Express against the Jeffer brothers, Max, Mac, Mac, and Jim. Uh, Brent. You know, I'm 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 a Midnight Express fan, but there was too many, too many top rope things. They just did it too often in WCW World Championship Wrestling WA for me. Uh, you know, and 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 I understand that they that's what they wanted to do. They were trying to get Bobby Eaton over that, but I, I just felt like you do it and you would do something and then you, the finish wouldn't be as as strong as what he just did off the top rope to him i i don't know that I, i'm i've been going back and watching it and I, I don't know about that i don't know if i can be a fan of uh, some of the stuff they well, they're they're doing very different they're very different than the andersons that's the that was the key to make sure you're different than the, any other tag team that they had to different than the and then the russians for sure uh, so the, uh, they did a lot of top rope stuff, and it was different. And I think that's primarily why they did. It's my my opinion of that. Uh, well, wasn't coming off the top rope a disqualification? No, not there. It's not. No, oh, that's okay. mid -Sure, that's mid south. Uh, then we saw the first. Uh, this was they they in the went in the match with what will end up being called the rocket launcher, uh, as Dennis Condry slams or takes and launches Bobby Eaton in a splash off the top rope onto one of the Jefferson. They just just well not even show up uh, for that one anyway. So interview, interview number the uh, next interview come up with the Sawyers and of course they're talking about Cornette and his and his uh, tennis racket. They show some video footage from the Omni uh, involving a look like Buzz Sawyer, Manny Fernandez against the Midnight Express. Cornette throws the tennis racket in, into uh, uh, Dennis Condry and then it freezes. And I I'm, that was magnificent. The yeah. way they froze that and yeah. came back to Buzz Sawyer. Yeah. Buzz Sawyer took off the thing and he's got oh that was oh that was great storytelling. I thought that was tremendous. And uh, so yeah, that that that's how that ended up. And of course the Sawyers are talking about their upcoming match with the Midnight Express. Match number ten uh was Ron Rossi against Buddy Lindell, the nature boy, and uh, with uh James J. Dillon uh Brent. I promised that match up. 
Did you flash that out? Yeah, I'm sorry, but I did. Uh, Jack? Uh, I, I like this else? match. Buddy was so aggressive in this match. I mean, that that, that poor Ron Rossick did not get the time of day from him. And that's what, to me, made it entertaining. Because the guy, the guys, uh, I mean, I hate to say it, he's, he's not really good. But Buddy was so over him. I don't care who it was. I mean, he, you know, he just smothered the guy up so much, but never slowed down doing it. I, I enjoyed the match. In the end, it's the spinning elbow followed by the figure four. And by no surprise, it's Buddy Land Lindell. Landell. I, I get confused on that. Uh, is the winner of that one with James J. Dillon. Then they go over to the desk for the interview with Buddy Landell and James J. Dillon. I thought Landell did a great job. He did a pose. He said, oh, 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 oh I want to show something for Ric Flair. And he showed him. And he said, oh, oh, not too much. Not too much. It was awesome. It was very different yeah. uh, than, uh, than, uh, uh, than what we had seen before. With uh, w uh, with all the pre interviews, even even Ric Flair. Then uh, concession stands best friend is Terry Taylor back out there, the leg, leg slapper himself, uh, the innovator, just tremendous. Has about the personality of a ring post, and his interviews are about as sincere as you can get. That's the reason he really never was the main event, never were going to be because he's insincere. He never believed what he was talking about, and it came over that he didn't believe what he was talking about. So you're about. saying the Red Rooster really didn't kill his career. Uh, you no, know, it was dead long before that. <laughs> no, he was he was awful before that. I mean, we saw him and Ric Flair fill the concession stand up at the Super So Bruce Frazier is telling the truth. It wasn't really Terry Taylor's fault as much as it was – no, it's it's it, well, it's, it's true. You, you if if somebody gives you a tool, you learn how to use it. Yeah. And he just didn't know how to use it. And and I watched him do an interview in Memphis. He was trying to be healed. It was awful. It was awful. It's it, it's it's still he's still insincere. That's the point. They comes over fake and phony. Exactly what's the problem with Mr. Taylor? Uh, but those are just good points. <laughs> now he and personally. He was a jerk personally behind the scenes as yeah. well. Well, yeah, but he, he, uh, I, that, that's, that, that's not the reason that uh, I despised him on this TV show or in this interview. He, uh, you know, he, he was he was good in the ring. He wasn't one of the greatest guys in the ring, but he was good. But I always thought they missed the boat of having him work as a babyface when he should have been a heel with a mouthpiece out there. With anybody talking for him, I think he would have gotten over a whole lot better if he had never been able to open it. Maybe do, uh, you know, Abdullah Jr. I don't know. You know, <laughs> something where he never talks. Uh, probably uh, probably one of the better things they could have done is put Kevin Sullivan as his manager. That would have worked. <laughs> he could have changed his name to, I don't know, he, he would change Bob Root's name and change – uh, what was it? Uh, was uh, who? Who did he change? Mike Davis' his name to Dusty Rhodes. Yep. He could have changed him. He could have changed him to Ric Flair because that's who he really wanted to be. Yep. <laughs> and he couldn't because he couldn't do the interview. <laughs> he wasn't the worst. Sure, could, the sure could slap his leg in the corner when people are hitting, but nobody could see that, Terry. Nobody could see it. You're sorry. I'm sorry. He's sorry. <laughs> despise. He's about as worse as Kevin Sullivan. It's just unwatchable. All right. For anyway, that's all I have to say about him. This is what you get for two ninety nine a month. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> he is, uh, Terry Taylor is the, one of the top ten unwatchables, by the way. Terry Taylor, number ten. Terry Taylor, Kevin Sullivan, right number one. But anyway, so <laughs> interview with the Terry Taylor. <laughs> the ring post. Uh, then match number eleven is Sam Houston against Black Mark. And he's the national champion. Taylor is at the desk. We're doing some wonderful commentary. I would have rather heard David Crockett. Uh, Jack, what did you think? Uh, the commentary made the match so much better. Or did it? <laughs> the match was so much better than the commentary. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, actually, this, this wasn't a, a, a bad match at all. I mean, we, we no. killed that Mark quite a bit. But, yes. uh, you know, he, he was solid in the ring. Uh, and this match was, was really good. Uh, I, I enjoyed uh, the fact that that Sam was working the the whole broken wrist deal and uh, worked it well. And when he made that big comeback, and everybody thought he had won, I mean, people were into it. Yeah. You know, so whatever else you want to say, that uh, the people believed it. 
Yeah, I like them. I like this match. This match was good, and the loaded elbow was uh, tremendous. I, I thought it was great. Yeah. And that was the end of the program. Uh, Bart wins did that, of course, like what Brett was saying with the uh, loaded elbow, and that ends the program. And Terry Taylor was involved. He distracted the referee, almost like he was not there to distract the referee so that Black Bart could use a foreign object on the man. Well, he was distracting the fans from that. So. Could be. <laughs> okay, folks, if you're watching, uh, give us a big thumbs up and subscribe to the page. And uh, if you hey, haven't subscribed to the page, subscribe. Nobody to saw it. Terry, nobody saw it. <laughs> nobody saw you slap your leg in the corner, Terry. Nobody saw it, you moron. <laughs> nobody saw it, Terry. Hey, I'm trying you to do my outro. Your leg in the corner. You're an idiot. Uh, and he'll sit there and critique everybody else's matches. I had to sit there and listen to him whine and cry and bout well, telling how great that he would be in these matches and putting them together. And then he goes to the ring and he slaps his leg like a moron. <laughs> okay, folks, give us a big thumbs up. Subscribe to the page. This is just some of the stuff that you can uh, watch right here on YouTube. Uh, what was I saying? I don't remember. Now. Don't I don't know. Know. Well, I'll tell you what. Subscribe. Like. Thumbs up, I think, is what it is. Like. And uh, hit that notification bell. And you'll get to see more videos just like this. And Rodney might have a uh, fit at any time during any kind of interview, especially uh, especially during uh, Terry Taylor or Kevin Sullivan or Mark Lewin. Mark Lewin. And uh, those, there's going to be others later. Thank you so much. And we'll see you yeah, in the next video on World Championship Wrestling.